Most city bankers are going out of their way to avoid demonstrators camped outside of St Paul's Cathedral in London protesting against the global economic crisis. Mm, but Justin Rowlett has found a man with 49 years of experience in the city who's willing to go down there and tell them why they're wrong. Starting just over a month ago in Wall Street, the so-called Occupy demonstrations have spread around the globe, campaigning against what they see as corporate power and greed. And this is the latest occupation outside St Paul's in London. The protesters here are saying it's time the money men change their ways. I think everybody here stands for what the majority believes, namely that what's happening politically and economically is not the right thing. I would like to see more regulation of the banks. It's about replacing the idea of capitalism with a different system. David Buick has been one of Britain's top bankers for 49 years, working with billions and making millions. We were wondering if you'd come down and, and tell the people there why you think Britain's bankers are brilliant and should be supported. Life's a debate. Bring it on. You're a brave man, David. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. David Buick. And he's here to tell you why he thinks that Britain's bankers are absolutely brilliant. I would like to know what he thinks the British taxpayers should be doing about the fact that we've given trillions of pounds to the banks um, on the basis that they said that they would probably give it to people who needed it, to small businesses, etc. You cannot actually expect the management of the very senior level of banks to countenance lending money to people who probably can't repay it. What you're saying is that the bankers aren't at fault. Yeah. No, I'm not saying the banks made some you contribution. You are more than 25 times the single worker in your company. That's the problem. Everything emanates from the bank. And if you don't think your lovely baby's hat, some company borrowed money from a bank in order to manufacture that, whether you like it or not, um, the financial sector just one alone employs two million people. It doesn't matter about yeah. employment, it's about the environment, it's about sustainability. But don't you, you feel know? that you need an economy that creates sufficient wealth to No, we need a resource-based economy yeah. when we look at the resources we have and work out what is sustainable for the planet. And what isn't? First. I mean, basically, the financial sector generates £54 billion a year in terms of revenue for the tax man. 30 minutes in and the crowd is now well over a hundred but David is still holding his ground. If there were no banks generating any profits at all there'd be no money lent to business industry or commerce, nobody would be able to manufacture anything, there'd be nothing in the shops and we'd have anarchy. Now our debt increased massively in 2008. When we bailed out the banks it rocketed and we went into a recession that neoliberalism and the policies of this government are sending us hurtling into an abyss. The first bank bailout in 2008-9 I'm afraid was inevitable because it was a problem all over the world and I'm afraid we are all paying for it. Pretty vigorous debate but I think David has quite a long way to go before he persuades these guys that Britain's bankers are brilliant. Vigorous indeed. Justin, uh, you got out of there safely. Thank goodness. What, what was your impression then? Well, it's quite interesting. I mean, there are the kind of anarchists and anti-capitalists that you'd expect, but actually most of the people there were really interested in having a debate. And when we brought David along, you know, they all gathered round and they actually, you, know, mm. you can see there, they listened to what he had to say. They actually agreed with him on some points. He agreed with them on some of the points that, that they made. And actually, there was a real sense that these people felt there was a big problem here in Britain and in other economies around the world, and they wanted to talk about how we might solve it. Good them. idea to do it. Nice. So what's actually going on? on there right now then? Well what's happening at the moment there is a little bit of a standoff with the church. The church is saying that there's a problem of access, they're saying the number of people going into St Paul's has fallen down and they issued a statement actually where they said the con they threatened that they might, they might possibly have to close the church. They've said the consequences of a decision to close St Paul's cannot be taken lightly mm -hmm. which I have to say is I think a very polite very Anglican way of saying we've just about had enough I of know, you because guys. They also yeah. depend on donations you see St Absolutely. Paul's, they need all that. Why don't they use Speaker's Corner? Why can't we open up Speaker's Corner, which was the place, the sacred place, yeah, but everybody yeah. wanted something to say, get the cameras up to Speaker's Corner, and I think that the people Draw have got something away. to encourage Draw them. Away. But them. unfortunately, you know, the, the commitment to this Occupy movement is to stay until Christmas, so they're saying, well, look, we're going to stay until Christmas, so there's mm -hmm. potential for conflict there. And of course, these, these protests are spreading. They're spreading around Britain. They're in Nottingham, Edinburgh, Bristol, Manchester, Glasgow, Newcastle, other British cities spreading around the world. And of course, at the heart of all of this is the concerns about the Eurozone and, of course, about the Greek economy. Oh, yeah. And as yeah. you know, 
hundreds of thousands of people have been on the streets of Greece in the last uh, as couple of months. Yes. Well, you've, you've been we out there. We saw this. You've been months. out there as well, haven't you? I have been out. Yeah. Yeah. And what was your impression? Well, we saw. Well, we had. We had. I was up in Thessaloniki, Thessalonica, um, and in Athens when they had strikes and people absolutely desperate. But the the extraordinary thing is, is that they're at the level in society at which it's reached. Um, you know, middle class people selling, sitting on the ground, selling their household things just oh, to get enough yeah. money to buy food. Yeah. People, and I talked to a teacher whose pay had been cut, it had gone down by something like 20, 25% in real terms, but everything else had gone up by 20% as well. So they're 50%, suddenly they're yeah, only yeah. getting half. They don't know how to pay their rent, yeah. their mortgages, they don't have to feed, they've got children at school. It's a real problem. Yeah. Terrible situation. Well,